Hi, and welcome to GRPC Conf. I'm really excited to be here to talk to you today. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about GRPC as it's grown as a community and its project. And I've also got a special guest here who's going to talk about Spotify's experience with GRPC. So my name is Shaul Hung. I'm the VP of Ecosystem at the CNCF, which is the home of GRPC, among many other open source projects. You can find me on Twitter at Oi Cheryl. And Leonardo, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. So I'm Leonardo. Uh, I'm an engineer in core infrastructure at Spotify. Cool. So let's look a little bit in the back. So. GRPC was the sixth project to join the CNCF. And since March of 2017, it's added more than 1,100 contributors who've collectively made nearly 250,000 contributions towards GRPC. And the contribution here is defined as a pull request, an issue, a commit, or a review. Um, what we're also seeing is that GRPC as a project is being more widely adopted and is more mature. So every year CNTF runs a survey where we ask people what projects they're using and whether they're using them in evaluation or in production. And since 2017, GRPC has gone from 39% in production to 65% today. And this number, the 2020 survey, is not out yet. So this is an early sneak preview. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Leonardo to talk about his experience. Thank you. So at Spotify, we have, in our backend, we have more than 1,400 microservices. Those are built by 280 teams, and we handle um, more than 8 million requests per second from our clients only. And this means a lot of internal communication between uh, backend services. It also means a lot of communication between the teams that build them, that have to, uh, to organize themselves and, and be in sync. So this means that we've been in uh, thinking about this for a very long time. So if we, talk, if we look at our past, um, it's already in 2012 that we were thinking about this and uh, grpc didn't exist back then um, i mean it was not announced to the public and um, we needed we, we thought that we needed a very high performance and easy to use wire protocol so what we did back then was that we built our own and what we ended up building uh, was interestingly enough was kind of similar to how grpc is in some ways for example it used uh, protocol buffers, just like gRPC did. HTTP2 didn't exist even uh, back in the time. So this uh, worked very well for us, and it allows us to allowed us to uh, to grow and scale uh, up to the point where we are today. So now we get to today, and the situation where we have is where we are is that our protocol still works fine. Uh, it's still high performance and good enough for the scale that we have today. So it's it scaled well. But there are some problems uh, that we cannot we cannot address with our protocol. Basically, this relates to the ecosystem. So just to give an example, um, we cannot leverage anything that already exists in the community. Uh, we cannot open source our own our own tools. Um, also, connected to that, um, we uh, we only built RAB libraries to support our own protocol in the couple programming languages that we care the most. But uh, this is a big limitation because anything else we want to do, we just cannot use it. Um, so we decided that this was getting a problem and wanted to fix it. And to fix it, we decided to adopt gRPC in production as our main, back, uh, as our main wire protocol. So uh, this has been working great to us. It's, it's kind of familiar, as I mentioned, because of some similarities to what we already have. But there is much more. So for example, as I mentioned, uh, it's great that there is already support for different programming languages, for example, and different uh, also programming paradigms in some cases. Uh, another specific uh, 
aspect related to that is that we we used to uh, very often build specific client libraries for every one of our microservice. Uh, but this was very cumbersome. Um, and also, there was a lot of coupling because any, any, any one of those libraries was very deeply coupled with not only programming language, but also uh, uh, concurrency models and dependencies and things like that. This is a lot of unnecessary complexity in, in coupling. And gRPC is a very good solution instead, where you just distribute the schema in a proto file and code generation takes care, takes care of that. So that's great. Um, so if we go to, uh, to the future, uh, there is a lot of interesting opportunity that is happening in, in GRPC that is very interesting for us. I can give you a couple examples. So, for example, in uh, regarding tracing, uh, GRPC already has support in different solutions like uh, open tracing, open tracing, and open census, and that this is great. Of course, these are things that we could build internally, but um, it's not the best use of our time, let's say. Uh, another field that is uh, is very interesting developments related to gRPC is is load balancing. So gRPC is already supported by different, uh, for example, open source uh, service meshes and also uh, managed solutions now start supporting gRPC and this is super interesting for us. Uh, one specific and very recent example that is also super exciting is that the gRPC libraries now support the XDS protocol, which is a protocol used to communicate with a with a with a control plane for Lucaside load balancing, and this allows to to have a very powerful and sophisticated uh, load balancing that knows about the whole system, the whole network uh, topology and behavior, but without incurring the cost of having a proxy through which all traffic has to go through, because the traffic is still going directly from service to service. So all of this is very exciting for us, and uh, we're very excited. So back to you, Cheryl. Awesome. Thank you, Leonardo. And really impressed and excited to see the impact that gRPC has had for Spotify. So if you want to hear more end user stories from companies like Spotify, I hope you can come and join the very first virtual KubeCon so this is in August and registration is open now, so get your tickets. So these slides are on my blog at oishowell.com. Thank you very much and have a fantastic conference.